Good afternoon. Well, the time has come that we dive into the fuel system on this here diesel rig. So, what we have right now is cartridge style fuel filter, which is, in my opinion, the worst of the worst of the worst. I can't stand oil filters and fuel filters like this. I hate them. I like that old can style. They hang down. This is just an invitation to put dirt in your motor. There's no way, I don't care how good you clean it, there's no way you're not getting dirt in that fuel bowl when you change that filter. It's happening. How much? Meh, maybe you can minimize it. But it's such a pain in the butt, and it's made out of plastic, and they're known for cracking and breaking. That's got to go, but for now, we're stuck with it. Factory fuel pump still down there. And then underneath here, on the frame rail... Morning, movie. Right here is a Princess Auto inline fuel pump. So, all right, that's gotta go. We can't have that. And what we're gonna do is we are going to install a lift pump pressure gauge, because right now we have no idea what's going on. I have no clue. Is it getting fuel? I don't know. Is the injection pump sucking the fuel through the lift pump? I don't know. I have no way to know anything. So, I have purchased this inline fuel pressure gauge goes 0 to 30 psi this snubber valve and then a pod so I can still have my oil pressure gauge and then also add a fuel pressure gauge which works out good because my single pod my little brother bought one of these gauges as well so I'm going to give him my single pod so that he has a way to mount his and that's going to let us know what's going on and I just got to thinking this morning because I wanted to fire that gauge and I got to thinking I was like man I should test this air dog pump that came with the truck. I have no idea if it works, um, obviously. I mean, let's be honest. She's seen better days. Uh, she definitely has some miles on her. But from what I can tell, it's all there. And the lines are all shot and cracked. I would have to replace all the lines. But what I'm thinking is, no matter what, I want to switch to cartridge, like whatever you want to call them, not cartridge style, these style of filters. I want a water separator, I want a 2 micron filter, because I don't know anything about these motors, but everybody says the same thing, a lift pump dies, kills your injection pump, makes perfect sense to me. I've, you know, I've talked about this with people that I know know what they're talking about, and they're like, oh yeah, make sure you keep an eye on those lift pumps, because they'll kill those VE44s. So, what we're going to do, I'm thinking, is I got a jerry can full of diesel, because I didn't own a diesel can, I now own a diesel can. And I'm going to hook up 12 volts to this pump and just see what happens. If nothing happens, project over there. And I've got some ideas about what I might do with it, even if it doesn't pump. But we're not going to go any further on the testing of it because it doesn't work. If it does pump, then I think I might put that gauge, temporarily wire it up to the test port on the block and see what kind of pressure it makes. And if it pumps and makes pressure, which I don't really know how to test that yet, but I got a couple ideas, then I'm going to go one step further. So I've already bought filters for that air dog, replacement filters. And my thinking was, even though I have no idea if it works, my thinking is this. If the pump doesn't pump, I feel like I can salvage that block that those filters are mounted to by... A whatever lift pump uh, you know not the super go fast one but just a right like uh, I'm pretty sure a good replacement lift pump for this truck might be the lift pump booster or whatever that they use in Duramax is fast makes one I can't remember what it's called but so something like that I might get a higher end but not full system uh, replacement and then what that'll allow me to do is have my pump on the frame rail where it's tucked up out of the way and remote mount my filters up above my skid plate by my transfer case. That's what I'm thinking. So I might salvage that filter housing, still use these filters, and away we go. I'm motivated to get rid of this for a lot of reasons. Like I said earlier, I hate the dirt and the dust and everything that for sure is getting in that bowl. I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't care how good you clean it. You're getting dirt in there. That's happening. How much? Will it hurt anything? Meh. But it's a pain in the butt to change these. I don't want nothing to do with them. And... The worst part to add insult to injury to what I would consider an inferior filter setup is this was 50 bucks, 5-0, 
at the parts store in town. Now, maybe I can get them cheaper somewhere else. I don't know. But I'll tell you what. All of this was less than that. And this is a thousand times the filter setup than that could ever hope to be. And this drains water and that doesn't. So it's kind of a no-brainer to me to uh, get away from this thing. So that's the plan. Uh, so first things first, let's set up a quick test here with a battery and see if this pump pumps. That's uh, project number one. Off we go. Here's what we got. I took all the wiring off, except for the wires that power the pump. I routed the return line back to the tank, the output line back to the tank, and the draw line, which is a little kinked actually. We'll probably not kink that which is all the way to the bottom of the tank. It'll for sure suck fuel. So, I'll uh, unkink that line and let's see if she pumps. I really hope this works because apparently these things are worth pretty big money. Although I wouldn't pay nothing for this one. It's in rough shape. Rough shape. So we got a positive. And a battery. Mm. No bueno. No bueno. I know that battery's got jammed too. So, maybe we try, let's try this. Let's clamp our positive to there. Who knows how long this thing's been sitting. Like I said, he grabbed it off a shelf and threw it in the box of the truck. No. No bueno. I mean, I don't know for a fact the red wire is the power wire. Let me try it backwards. Okay, well, I ran out of storage there and it stopped recording, but here's what, uh, here's what we know. This thing's in rough shape, real rough shape. The block, I think, is salvageable. I have no idea what's underneath here in terms of ports, but my thinking is this. I can run this block, I can put new lines on it and feed my injection pump. I can replace these filters with those ones. And everything will still work. And then what I'll have to do is either replace this pump with one that mounts on this block. Which is maybe cheaper than buying a whole system. Whole systems, we'll call it a thousand bucks in Canada because that's about what they seem to go for. So if I could get just a pump for 500 bucks, that's better than a thousand. If I can buy another quality inline pump and just use that to feed this block, that's better. Um, but there's no point in hooking my gauge up to this right now because the pump doesn't work. So I'm just going to go ahead and install the gauges in the truck then because now there's no point in testing this and change the fuel filter that I have because I don't know, I have no idea where it's at. Thing's got half a million kilometers on it. For all I know, nobody's pulled that filter out of there in 10 years. I have no idea. So I'm going to change the fuel filter that's in there. Just replace the cartridge one for now hook up my gauges, wire them all in, so that at least I can monitor my lift pump pressure. And depending on what the results of all that are, will determine how much of a priority getting some kind of other lift pump system up and running with filters is. If uh, I'm already, you know, low on PSIs, then boom, top of the priority list to make this work or replace it with another one or whatever. It might very well be the case that by the time I replace that pump and all the lines and get all the fittings that I'm gonna to need to make it all work, that it would be easier to just buy a whole system. In that case, that's what I'm gonna do. But I really like the idea of not having those fuel filters hanging down low on the side of the frame like every truck I see, because I will rip that off, I guarantee you. I will be peeling those filters off there on the side of the bush trail one day 
probably while I'm out cutting firewood, a branch will flip up from the tire and whack them right off. So I would really like that if I do get something else, I would like those filters to be up above my skid plate, which from what I understand is not an ideal location for them. But if that's where they got to be, that's where, that's where they are. Anyway, moving on, let's start with the uh, fuel filter install and then I'll put the pressure switch in with the banjo bolt that's supplied and get my truck running again. And then once it's running again, I'll worry about wiring the gauge because I need it running at the end of the day today because I'm going fishing with it tomorrow. So first things first, we'll open up the fuel system, get that snubber valve installed on the banjo bolt get the fuel filter replaced, get everything primed and running again, and then we'll worry about wiring and all that jazz. There you have it. We got the uh, pressure sending unit all installed. Wires run through a grommet. And you can kind of see, same grommet that red wire is going through. I put, uh, I put the uh, loom over top of it. And there's our gauge set up. Now, it's two days later and I've already tested it and it's running. Oh man, it's still holding pressure from yesterday or maybe it just stays the last place you left it. It's two days later, but I live in one of them types of neighborhoods where uh, if you're working on your pickup truck in your driveway and your hood's open, you better believe every one of your neighbors is coming by. And this is the first time people have been seeing me outside, so everybody was popping in and the filming just kind of stopped somewhere through and ended up having a neighbor party in the driveway whilst I work on my truck. But I'll tell you what I did. It was a really straightforward install. Uh, three wires coming from the sensor. They go right to the back of the gauge. The gauge has its own separate ground, its own separate power, and then a wire off the dimmer. But I didn't have to trace a wire for the dimmer because my oil pressure gauge already had one traced. So I just tapped into that. It might blow fuses, we'll see. It hasn't blown one yet. And it works good. So I am, when it's running, I'm just under just under 10 PSI. So it's a little on the low side. And if I full throttle it, especially above 2000, it will drop down below 8. So we will be addressing the lift pump uh, in the future, in the near, near future. But that's going to do it for that. Uh, I'm glad I can keep an eye on it now. I can't stop but staring at it. We have a new problem now. And this is just the way this truck's gonna be forever and ever. This one's minor though. I had her out on the lake yesterday. We were ice fishing. I drove it on the ice. So it was gonna be the last time on the ice. And we were at the first spot in the morning. And I probably can't find it. But that tire's flat. It's only not sitting on the ground because I already chucked a jack stand underneath it. But we were at the first spot fishing. And um, I saw a screw sticking out of the tires. Oh man, I picked up a screw. Half an hour later, that tire was had dropped half its pressure. Now, I don't have a spare for this truck. I didn't even have a compressor and a tire plug kit, which is not my style, but there we are. I asked the three other guys I was with if they had one, they didn't. So I made the executive decision to pull the pin at noon and get off the lake before I ended up on a frozen lake with a flat tire, because, you know, that's not gonna be a good time. And I made it home, there was 15 PSI left in it. So, today's project is uh, put some tires on. But that's going to be the next one for you. So that concludes our gauge festivities. And we're all installed and running good. And uh, thanks for coming out. We'll see you next time.